People can talk as much smack as they like, but when push comes to shove and the fighting starts, that's when the truth of the matter comes out. You can't hide behind your mouth when someone's beating you up. Here's what happens when you pretend to be a black belt and it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> And to kick things off, we're going to immediately look at what happens when a Shaolin monk goes head-to-head -head with a guy who actually knows how to strike. Okay, maybe we're being a little unfair here, because the monk does seem to have at least some clean technique to his game. But overall, these Shaolin dudes get way too obsessed over the idea that they have indestructible chins. It doesn't matter how much internal energy you have, any guy on this planet can be knocked out cold. And for this monk, he received a sobering lesson on reality when he decided to put his chin to the test. After dropping his hands and calling on his opponent to attack, this absolute genius basically allowed his opponent to hit him three times square on the chin, and believe it or not, he ended up getting himself KO'd in the process. <laughs> this karate combat post is one hell of an example of why black belts shouldn't waste their time taking on yellow belts. But let's be real, this fight was only going to ever end one way. After a brief feeling out process where he hammered his opponent with body shots, the fight ending crescent kick came shortly after, and the impact here was insane. Not only did he wind this kick up and throw it with zero telegraphing, but he also did it at a remarkably close range. You need some wild flexibility to make that happen. And that's why this yellow belt fighter simply didn't see the shot coming. And those are the ones that are way more likely to knock you out cold. There's nothing better than a fake black belt getting exposed. And while this one didn't necessarily end up with a full-blown demonstration of his skills, the infamous Jake Kiros was left totally embarrassed when his so-called black belt level BJJ was called into question by a suspicious jiu-jitsu fighter who went into his school undercover. Apart from Kiro's shoddy technique and odd teaching methods, the fact that he refused to roll with his students was a major early red flag. It was obvious that this guy was full of it, and even when he was confronted with it all, he still tried to maintain the facade. The clip went insanely viral, and the name Jay Kiro's was forever ruined. Who knows if that was even his real name? Probably not. But this video did a great job of putting off many other fake BJJ black belts from even trying to con the public. You just can't live down an embarrassment like this. I understand. Roll. Yes. I understand. Roll, man. You want to roll? All I want to do is roll. Hey, 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 hey. Just roll. Hey. This next series of clips from the channel Let's Play Taekwondo showcases just how big of a difference a clear skill and speed advantage can make when the kicks start flying. Not only can you see the experience deficit here, but the timing on some of these shots is truly insane. Being able to anticipate and counter your opponent's moves with a snapping kick of your own is the ultimate disruption. And in these clips, you can really tell which of these fighters is the legit black belt level talent and which one falls some way short of that. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the type of art form that can render even the most fearsome looking opponents totally useless. And in this clip, we see what happens when a tough-looking bodybuilder is forced to contend with a legitimate BJJ black belt. And to say that he got ragdolled would be putting it lightly. Muscles are all well and good when you're posing on stage or in the gym. But in an actual fight, unless those muscles are trained with the proper intent, all they're doing is slowing you down. And for this guy, he got the lesson that he'll likely never forget. No burpee? Uh -uh. No burpee? Why are you bleeding your own blood? Ugh. Huh? I'm done. 80s karate was one hell of a product, folks. And thanks to the channel Old School Fighter, we have the chance to see some of these fighters in their absolute prime, dealing with their opponents with brutal consequences. These guys weren't dancing around either, playing tag. No, these were brutal knockouts on display here. And whenever someone entered the arena that wasn't up to standard, or was lacking in a certain key area, they often were met with a hard kick right to the side of the dome. And when these karate guys produced highlights, they were usually brutal. 
Judo is a very underrated martial art in the pantheon of the MMA skill set. And in this clip from Dubious Dom, we get a sense of just how dominant it can be against Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with the right practitioner using it. Because man, it doesn't seem to matter at all that this BJJ guy is a black belt. For the entirety of this contest, he basically gets thrown around by his opponent with little to no effort being spent. Getting black belt level in BJJ is no small task, but you'd be forgiven for assuming that this guy was a white belt based on how he carried himself. Top tier judicas have a talent for making good grapplers look very ordinary by comparison. And that's what you saw playing out here. <laughs> this next Taekwondo clip is a story of two very different fighters in terms of their efficiency. Sure, the red guy keeps falling over as he searches for the perfect shot, but his own accuracy is way higher when compared to the blue fighter. And after losing his footing a few times early on, he eventually broke through in a huge way, landing an insane spinning back kick that dropped his opponent instantly. Extra points have to be given for the split-second celebration he pulled off too, before immediately getting his head back in the game. Accuracy is so important when the kicks start flying, and this guy's skills in that department were on full display here. When you're facing a less experienced or talented opponent, misdirection is always your best friend when it comes to getting the knockout. And for this far superior Taekwondo fighter, his spin and wild pivots were only designed to fake with the initial kick. The first kick he threw at the end of his long and dramatic spin was only designed to throw his opponent off the scent. No, the real weapon here was saved for when the first kick landed, and directly after it did, he used that kick as a springboard to land his primary weapon, another head kick that shot up and caught its intended target totally off guard. A genius sequence that might not have worked against a more experienced opponent. Next up, thanks to this clip from One More Round, we have yet another tough guy bodybuilder getting absolutely handled when he decides that his muscles make him a suitable match for a BJJ black belt. And yeah, he seemed quite confident as he moved in to engage, no doubt sure in his own mind that his physical strength would carry him through. Well, as it turned out, not only was he no match for this particular black belt, but he also would have been ridiculed by every single member of that gym in quick succession. Sure, the dude looked the part, and maybe next time, he'd be wise to leave the fighting for, you know, the actual fighters. We go next to Ireland and the famed SBG gym that produced the legendary Conor McGregor. His coach, Owen Roddy, a BJJ black belt in his own right, took a challenge from yet another bodybuilder who thought he could hang with a trained fighter. And though Roddy weighs about 160 pounds by the looks of things, he was able to very quickly and very easily find his way to a submission here. Even as the dude tried to overpower him by flinging him into the air, the gentle art of BJJ allowed Roddy to hide the momentum and eventually land in the optimum position to find a quick choke and secure the tap. Man, these bodybuilders never learn, do they? And how about these totally masterful kick counters, courtesy of the channel Huey Fight? Muay Thai is a sport that has so many intricate ways to hurt your opponents, ranging from kicks and knees to punches and elbows. But within the art of eight limbs, there's a level of subtlety and nuance that most people just don't pick up on. And the very best Muay Thai practitioners on the planet have some crazy sweeps and throws at their disposal. Moves that are designed to counteract your opponent's intentions, whether by using their own momentum against them or by offsetting their balances as they attempt to land. And as you can see, these techniques are totally viable when you're fighting someone who's far less experienced than you. They're the type of moves that a master can use to completely demoralize someone. One minute you're setting up your own offense, the next you've totally lost your footing and you're looking up at your opponent from the mat. You want to see more karate from the 1980s? Well, this, in our opinion, was when the sport had truly reached a commercial peak in terms of being viable for massive audiences. These dudes looked a lot less like the Zen warriors of old and more like the type of guys you'd see downing beers at the bar. And whenever they threw down and fought, the results were far more high-paced than usual. These were always going for the kill, and if their opponent wasn't up to that level, there was a good chance that they were about to get KO'd stiff. And the sheer force of some of these head kicks was a true sight to behold. A lot of that mean side has since been channeled into MMA, but make no mistake, 80s karate was no joke. 
More insane Taekwondo comes in next, as some wild kicking exchanges end, with one guy asserting total dominance over the other. There was just a clear deficit in skill here, and the more competent guy very clearly knew it. You can really only go so far in competitions like this if you're facing a considerably better opponent, and you can just see the confidence start to shine through when he realized just how much better he is. Forward momentum is such an important thing in a striking game as fast-paced as Taekwondo, because it's a lot harder to generate force with kicks when you're moving backwards. It's possible, sure, but this wasn't up to the task, and when he started to move backwards, he was basically inviting his opponent's aggression. We go again to karate combat and some sneaky illegal punching going on. Who knows what set this dude off, but when the fight itself was going against him, this guy decided to bend the rules and sucker punch his opponent when the ref was between them. Thankfully, the official stepped in and immediately took a point from him. And as soon as the bout began, the guy who'd been the victim of this sneaky shot seemed to step on the gas in a huge way. All of a sudden, he was fighting with a renewed sense of urgency. And man, you could just feel the energy in him growing. He didn't quite manage to get the KO in the end, but if there's one thing we can all agree on, it's that a dirty fighter like that has absolutely no place in combat sports. We've watched a lot of fake black belts getting embarrassed, but here's what happens when a totally unprepared and inexperienced MMA fighter tries his hand at beating up a master of Kyokushin karate. It became very clear that this was a total mismatch. Usually, the MMA fighter has a very good chance of disrupting the striker's offense, thanks to their own arsenal of skills. But on this occasion, that's not what happened. This karate master was light years ahead of his competition, and his snapping front kicks, crescent kicks, and body shots had this MMA fighter on the defensive as soon as things got started. This was a one-sided onslaught, and you can't help but get the feeling that this could have resulted in a KO if the master was feeling a little less merciful, a one-sided beatdown in every sense of the phrase. There was just one Taekwondo artist who was clearly much better than the other here, and his ability to judge the distance between himself and his opponent was so much more impressive. It seemed like he had such a good feel for the range that every long-distance strike he threw was perfectly judged. Every darting front kick seemed to land directly on target, and when you're a fighter who is far worse at range judgment, you're basically left acting like target practice for the far more skilled fighter. And what better way to finish than with this hilarious skit from Huey Ha Ha 4918? Because for as much as this clip was staged, there's some very real and accurate energy to the way this guy acted. Some guys just can't keep a level of zen calm when it comes to an incoming fight. And while the push-ups were a little over the top, this wasn't the most unrealistic thing to see happen before a street fight. Although that being said, using up all your energy like this is pretty inadvisable. Cardio wins fights, folks and you're not often going to find yourself in a situation where your opponent has the good sense to turn and run. But hey, sometimes it's worth a shot, right?